Hello YouTube, my name is Chrissy and welcome to my channel. Today I'm sharing my preschool through early kinder curriculum and resources for the 2019-2020 school year. If you're a homeschool parent, then you might be able to relate to the point that we don't necessarily classify our children by grade level. According to our state laws, Noah would have started pre-kinder this school year. Getting technical here, Noah has been schooling alongside his older sister for three years now, but I haven't pushed any curriculum with him. A lot of reading, morning time, singing, devotional, and art. Um, he does always participate in our unit studies and enjoys shelf work activities. Up to this point, it's been mostly learning through play, building, stacking, um, a lot of observation. It's been very relaxed, but Noah will be turning five years old next month, and I have observed a shift in his maturity and interest in formal schooling. So only because of those observations and per his request is why I will have curriculum available for him this year. The curriculum or sit down work is very minimal and still very relaxed, 15 minutes of formal schooling at most. So we are working with LMNOP and all the letters A to Z, uh, a journey through the alphabet, and I have the teacher or parent manual as well as the alphabet book. So I chose this for Noah at this moment because he is very much in a period where he flourishes and learns the most through um, interactive uh, storytelling, drawing, acting out or dramatization, singing. And this does take us very much to a fairy tale-ish uh, fiction side. So the illustrations are inspired by the European culture and art of the 14th through 17th centuries. Uh, one side you'll see is the illustration with an alphabet letter being part of the picture and a short story or poem on the other side um, made up of words and sounds emphasizing the respective letter. And there is more to discuss than the obvious in the illustrations. For example, uh, bear is the main illustration on this page, but there is also brown and berries and belly and bees buzzing, dragon, dungeon, dark, danger, door. For a while, I had a trouble balancing that notion um, between a child needing fiction and reality because in the Montessori method, we are taught to use living books and scenarios and that fantasy could confuse young children. There is a big importance and value in offering reality to young children and I absolutely agree with that. But I have noticed in my children that around the age of five, uh, they ha seem to have a strong grip on reality, uh, fantasy, and fiction. Um, they're uh, able to distinguish the difference. For example, Noah is able to voice and express that animals don't wear clothes or they don't sing and dance. Uh, so my advice would be to lay down these fundamentals first of reality and fiction uh, and of course observe your child and pick up from there. But overall, it's my opinion uh, that fantasy and fiction uh, literature for children is an overall positive experience and fundamental in development. So the alphabet book is a wonderful resource in itself as, a, as an alphabet picture book or a unique alphabet picture book. But in my opinion, the manual is what enhances uh, the journey. A manual for stories and activities in poetry, music, movement, speech, drama, and drawing. This resource is very much teacher or parent intensive. You're memorizing stories, making uh, your own stories, poems, uh, gestures, and or hand plays to those stories, singing, drawing. So basically, this is the opposite of an open and go curriculum. 
Here in the introduction, the author explains why the illustrations are in the forms of letters and how you can find and create stories from those illustrations. An explanation on sound and gesture, which is very important. Presenting a lesson, which uh, the author recommends is broken up in three day blocks. So day one, the teacher tells a story. Day two, the children are asked to recall what they remember from the story, and each child can contribute a bit. And day three, the children draw the picture themselves. That's basically a sum up of the lesson. So then there's reciting the poems and learning them by heart, abbreviating the poems, using LMNOP as a reader, hands-on activities, dramatization, and drawing. Uh, little songs and pentatonic flutes, which is traditional to Waldorf, and finally singing LMNOP. And there is a downloadable CD to go with the series, and you do have to purchase that separately. And then the rest of the book are stories, uh, songs, activities, exercises, tongue twisters, poems, suggestions for every letter of the alphabet. And so what's valuable to me about this curriculum is that unlike a lot of other Waldorf curriculums, the author uh, gives you an option. So he provides you with a story that he has created already, or he gives you the option of creating and using your own stories. And for someone that is still very new to uh, the storytelling method, um, I found it very helpful uh, that the stories were already provided for me. And even further, he goes as far as providing the gestures line per line to go with his story. There are activity suggestions for each letter, and for letter A, it's a vowel singing exercise. Emphasizing on uh, or continuing with the theme of nature's array in the alphabet book by exploring fruits and animals that may begin with the letter A. There is also a game of which is it and which is it the name game. There is a tongue twister, uh, exploring names that begin with the letter A and finally onto drawing the letter A. And so this is pretty much the layout for every letter of the alphabet. Uh, there are some variations in activities from letter to letter, but there are story suggestions for every letter, um, reciting the story uh, with the gestures, uh, name games, um, poems, tongue twisters, uh, the drawings. I know I really went into depth uh, with this manual, but I have not found any other videos on YouTube uh, that did go into a flip through of the manual. So I wanted to make sure that I was thorough and provided that for you. So I hope you enjoyed that. Okay, and moving on to the wall cards, which are a whole uh hold a whole value on its own. So they are the exact same illustration uh, as the alphabet book and the backside has the same poem. So you can very much use this for storytelling. The format of the front and back is ideal for that. But to me, this holds the most value as it being displayed or hung in our schoolroom. Um, Ideally, you want to dis display these as low as possible to the child's eye level, um, but really they're just for exploration and it's a tool to enable uh, visual learning. Posters are one of my top uh, educational tools to use uh, since infant age, so make sure you don't skip out on those. And then my trusty Strathmore drawing pad that you've seen me pull out time and time again in my curriculum videos. And this is what I am using to um, illustrate those letters or the drawings um, as recommended uh, per the teacher's manual. It's very far. Good. I love you with all my heart. Be peaceful. Be 
Calm. Okay, so now we can do the long vowel A. Bella, what about don't go please stay? Bring your umbrella, it's going to rain. We get letters in the mail. If you like to run, let's have a race. Good. Your nose and eyes are on your face. We have lemons. Let's make lemonade. It's very big and swims in the sea. It's a whale. Bears sleep in a cave. Good. Okay. So let's do short A. When we work, we use our hands. When I'm feeling blue, I'm feeling sad. What about avocado? Avocado, avocado. Alligator, ant. Alligator, ant. Ant eater. Ant eater. What about an ape? Ape. Which one starts with A? Questions or answers? Answers. Answers. Apes or monkeys? Which one is it? Apes. Good. Yay! Amazing or wonderful? Morning or afternoon? Afternoon. Good. Europe or Asia? Asia. Nice. Edward or Andrew? Andrew. Ants or bees? Ants. Ants. Noah. Which one sounds like a smoke or ashes? Ashes. Ashes. Good. Bella, the state of Alabama or Mississippi? Alabama. Alabama. Noah, which one sounds like A? Awful or terrible? Awful. Awful, good. Names that start with the letter A, like Anna. Anna. What other names can you think of that start with A? <laughs> what about other names that start with an A? Starts with the R. Ronald. Ronald. What about Arnold? Arnold. What about Alice? Alice. Like Alice in Wonderland. What Alice. about Abby? Abby. Abby. What about Alice, my name your cousin? Her name starts with an A. Um, Addison. Addison. That's right. Uh, see you again. Okay, yeah. Noah. A tongue twister. Ready? What ails Alice? Asks Alice. <laughs> Can you say that? What else Alice asks? Alice. What Alice likes to ask. <laughs> what ails Alex asks Alice? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. You have to say it really fast. What ails Alex asks Alice? Once we complete the three-day block through LMNOP or the three-day lesson, then Noah will be making his way through the Good and the Beautiful Pre-K course book. Uh, so uh, he does know a lot of this material already, but he can use a lot more practice in uh, letter sounds and vowels and rhyming. Um, this also includes numbers, one through ten, I believe, colors, motor skills, sorting, matching, and like I said, rhyming. So this is the level I chose for him. This resource really is all inclusive. So if you wanted to, this is really all that is needed for a preschooler. It's uh, guided for the parents. So it's easy, uh, not very much prep work needed. And it still does have a lot of engaging um, and hands-on activities for the child more than just a basic or traditional preschool workbook.
So in here you can find games, art, poetry, hands-on motor skills activities. Uh, Bella also completed this at the age of four to five and she really loved it. Um, and once he's finished with this, we'll dive right into the K uh, primer from The Good and the Beautiful. Noah calls this his binder work and he chose the binder color and he really enjoys this. There's not much more to say about it. So now I'll get into uh, resources that I like to add or just to supplement to our curriculum. Uh, and these are reproducible worksheets from the Dollar Tree. And I've had these for a while. I'm determined to use these up. And how I plan on using them is including them in his busy kits. Uh, so his older siblings um, are involved in a lot of extracurricular activities, which means a lot of waiting around for us at games and practices, etc. So I can put this in his busy kit with all the supplies needed, scissors, um, crayon, pencil, and it will be school on the go. And um, I have one for shapes and this one is for alphabet letters. And we love sticker activity books. And while this one is not my favorite, for a dollar it is a good deal. And it's uh, perfect for practicing the beginning sounds or alphabet sounds. The Good and the Beautiful Pre-K book does include some tracing and handwriting, but I feel like he needs a little bit more. So this is a dry erase uh, or a wipe and clean book by Pretty Learning. And again, just perfect for all on the go. All we need is uh, a dry erase marker to pair it with. It's really colorful and cheerful and animated right up Noah's style and alley. And another pretty learning um, wipe and clean book, except this is an alphabet book. So focusing more on letter formation. One of his favorite games at the moment is Sequence Letters, so a spin-off to the traditional sequence board game. And the best comparison that I have is that this is kind of like bingo. So depending on the cards that you draw, the alphabet uh, cards, uh, then you are to place a chip on the pictures that begin with um, the, that letter on your cards. And of course, the first to get four in a row wins. Um, my children like to continue on until we have filled up the entire board. I like to keep a little basket available that I can just hand over to him if I need him to stay busy while I'm working with his sisters. Uh, so these are our favorite alphabet flashcards and these are by Nat Geo and the Teaching Tree, which is a Dollar Tree brand. Uh, brand. And so it's just your alphabet. There are even some letter blends, but what makes these cards so interesting are the traditional National Geographic uh, photographs. Really high quality. Noah loves these flashcards. Alphabet Bingo by School Starters, and I find this brand at Walmart, and it's uh, basically what it is, Alphabet Bingo. So you, um, your chip, uh, you or you draw, I'm sorry, a letter, uh, and then you put place your chip, whatever manipulative we may use at the moment, uh, whether it be a gem or a seashell, and you go ahead and you mark um, whichever picture begins with that letter. So perfect for practicing those beginning sounds. Rhyming puzzle cards, and these are two-part puzzles by the same brand, School Starters. And what I like about these is that they're self-corrective. Um, so each piece can only fit with its, with its respective piece, but it's also color-coded. Uh, so he does need my help in the rhyming, but he can also just use it as a color matching activity. Another two-part puzzle set, and I believe this one is from Target. This is Opposites. Now, he does need me to kind of get him going um, and start this activity and show him uh, the rhythm of it um, or the gist of it. Um, but once he does get going, he is able to complete this uh, card set independently. This questions game book is really neat. 
Um, it's for literacy, math, science, music, social skills, nature, creativity, and health. And this is great um, for like car schooling or again on the go. So uh, basically, it's just um, asking questions, uh, and I'll have to pick and choose which are at his level, um, but this is something that I can also use with Bella, and they both really enjoy it. The Leapfrog Tag Reader System. It's an old resource, but a really good one. I remember using this with my now adolescents, not this exact same one, but they did own one as well. And I knew that Noah would enjoy it because our library has this and he looks forward to it um, on every library trip. So I found it at a garage sale for a few bucks and I knew um, I should pick it up for him and sure enough he does reach for this off the shelf just about every day and it's one of those um, wonderful independent type of activities that he can stay busy with while I work with his sister. An alphabet sound object box and this is a DIY and I actually have a very old tutorial um, on how I made these so I'll be sure to link it down below uh, but basically each uh, drawer has it's supposed to have an uppercase and lowercase but we're missing the letter A um, and then you can use uh, picture cards or small objects if you have them um, that begin with that letter sound and this is just so fun all of my three uh, children have enjoyed these um, there's something about small objects and trinkets that my kids love and I pull out two letters at a time so just uh, one little box that has two drawers at a time and uh, once he's not reaching for it anymore then I'll switch it out for another set of letters. sandpaper letter tiles and these are very much loved in our home uh, this is a traditional montessori material or resource and montessori resources can be expensive although i did find this one secondhand uh, this one is worth uh, the price in my opinion because they are so versatile and open-ended they can be used for many activities um, pre-writing practice sorting matching um, sequencing again just a traditional favorite in our home Noah really gets a kick out of our telephone game with the Tubaloo auditory feedback phone. So whatever is spoken into the phone, it bounces back into their ear. And so the phone rings, we pick it up, turn around the letter, and we just come up with as many names or phrases or words emphasizing that letter sound. My next resource is for our learning through play block time and these are my DIY alphabet peg dolls that I started but have not finished the entire alphabet set. Now I know that I've been promising a peg doll video but here is my explanation. It's just easiest to make these at night without any interruption from the kids because once I get started on a peg doll there's so much detail uh, that it's really hard to get interrupted and have to get up and then there's no motivation to come back and finish it. But I will get a peg doll video out for you, I promise. Uh, just let me spit out these curriculum videos and then I'll continue to work on these peg dolls. So I made some of these to be really specific. So for example, pirate for P, while others are a little bit more open-ended. For example, for A, um, I did give her a little embellishment of an apple hat, but she can also be a girl or Abigail or Anna. For H, I wanted, uh, I didn't want to make this specific, but I did want to emphasize on hair and a heart hair bow in her hair. For B, I made boys with big black bushy hair. 
So right now I'd say I have about half and half of ones that are really specific, uh, like Toadstool, and some uh, that are a little more open-ended. And I think I'm going to continue with the open-ended route from here on out so that I can finish these sometime within the next year. And the last resource, and one that is free, one that is available to everyone, and something that we recycle school year after school year, is The Great Outdoors. So thank you for making it to the end of another one of my lengthy videos. I hope that at least you had a snack to get you through it. If you did enjoy this video, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. It helps me out a lot and thank you for your love.